Welcome back, everybody, to Ask the Ranger series. My name is Randy Scrapper, and I'm a Principal Product Success Architect here at ServiceNow. In the series today, we're going to talk about software discovery models. We're going to look at the software discovery model table. We'll look at the common attributes that are used by the software asset managers. And we'll look at the forums on the default for forum itself. Uh, and then we'll jump into uh, the instance and kind of take a look around. As you guys know, the software discovery models, they come directly from the software installation records. Uh, and these discovery models go to the discovery model table. Uh, and from here, from the CMDB underscore SAM underscore SW underscore discovery underscore model, you'll hit the the discovery table and you'll be able to uh, run reports from here. Some of the attributes that are commonly used by software asset managers uh, for their software discovery models is first the display name. Uh, this is the, the name that is uh, coming from the discovery model, the discovered publisher, the product, and the discovered version. Next, we tend to look to see if it is normalized. What is the normalization status? Uh, there are six statuses, normalized, partially normalized, publisher normalized, match not found, manually normalized, and new. We want to try to make sure that we have most of our um, applications should be normalized especially if they're tier one publishers. So if it's a Microsoft or Adobe, uh, IBM, Oracle, those are taught, called top tier publishers. Those should all be normalized um, in the tool. So if they're not there, it might be something to kind of look at. Next couple of ones, I kind of broke into some, uh, I grouped them a little bit. Uh, these ones are first the normalized values. So, uh, if you have, uh, they, they show first show the discovered ones, the discovered publisher, the product and version, as well as if they're normalized, uh, they will show the normalized uh, publisher product and version. Uh, and it also will show you the product type if it's normalized, if it's a child or if it's uh, licensable or non-licensable. Uh, you know, these are all attributes <clears throat> that our uh, software asset managers tend to look at on a normal basis. <clears throat> So we're jumping into our software discovery model form. And from here, you can see, you know, we have the display name, we have the normalization status right up at the top. Uh, on the right side at the top, you have the discovered publisher mm -hmm. product and version. And directly across of it, you can see the normalized publisher product and version. So, you know, as you see, you know, it's coming in and it's normalizing it to something that it can be reconciled with in uh, when we do reconciliation. And also, if you look in the next section under additional information, you can see where it says product type and it says licensable. Uh, and you also see the addition in this uh, additional information. Uh, addition sometimes comes in, uh, but if, it, if we are able to find it, it will be populated in this, in this field. You know, some of the other attributes they have is platform or language, uh, you know, or, you know, the software model, if it's actually mapped back to uh, a, a software model. <clears throat> and on the bottom, on the related list, we have all the software installations to that discovery model. So uh, you could scroll down to see all the inf installations that are for that discovery model. All right. Let's take a jump in uh, to an instance and take a look around and, and uh, see those discovery models. All right. So there's a couple of different ways we could go and look for that discovery model. We could look for it on the installations, or we can go right into the table. So let's we'll just go right into the table. So we're going to go ahead and put CMDB. Uh, 
just I think I put CMDB in twice. I did. All right. Now here's all the discovery models that I have in my instance. And from here, I can see that some are normalized, some are manually normalized. And you can sort by those. You can see the publisher product conversion. But we're going to go ahead and just jump into one and kind of see what we can see in, in it. We'll just go ahead and take this first one. So from here, we see that this is the name that's coming back as the publisher, the product, and the version from the discovered name. As you see, it is with the the longer version, uh, discovered version here. However, this discovered uh, information has been normalized, and we can see here, and it was normalized to Microsoft and the Windows Communication Foundation Diagnostic, and then the actual version is actually 16.0. We see that it is not licensed, so it's, it's not licensable. Uh, and we, when we go down to the bottom, we can see the installation. We see that this uh, we have one installation and it's installed on this one machine right here. This is the software discovery models. Uh, and let's jump back out and summarize what we just learned. All right, so what, today we covered software discovery models. We identified the attributes that are the software asset managers use or tend to look for uh, on the software discovery models. We also looked around the, the default form, saw what the default form had on it, and uh, were able to make some updates to that if we needed to. If you need any more information uh, around this, you can reach out to or look at the product document site or in the ServiceNow community. And you know, be on the lookout for more uh, videos on Ask the Ranger series on YouTube. Goodbye, and we'll talk to you guys soon.